Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Firstly, before I start, I want to thank all of you for giving me and my channel so much love. I really didn't think you'd like what I'm putting out so much. I was actually quite nervous before this whole thing began. I've been reading all your comments uh, and I can't wait to put out all the things I have planned. So let's get started. You know, sometimes when you're thinking, God, I'm so stressed out. I think my hair is going to fall out. That is exactly what happened to me. I think I was so stressed that my hair began to fall out. And like always, I went on to this deep dive to figure out what's going on. And today I want to share my hair fall journey with you and how I combated it, uh, how I'm still kind of going through it. And what are the products that helped me? What are the practices that helped me? What are the things that I'm still doing? What I think was the cause for it. I think I have it figured out. So I want to share all of that and more with you. So what I do want to tell you guys is this is essentially my experience, obviously, and how I googled myself out of this problem. If you are facing severe hair fall, you feel like it requires medical attention. I would suggest that you go and see a trichologist. So I'm going to start with how it all started. Um, that's funny. Around six to seven months ago, I faced terrible hair fall. I had never had it before. I mean, not in this way. Of course, I have had hair fall postpartum twice, but never in this way. I was seeing visible thinning. Temples begin to recede. Clumps of hair falling. I was so scared to even brush my hair because that's the amount of hair that was falling. I was just scared to touch my hair. That's when I realized that something is wrong and I need to do something about it. This is not an ad script. I mean, it. I genuinely felt horrible. When I calmed down, I realized I need to figure out what is the root cause, pun intended, of this hair fall. Because there's always an underlying condition that leads to this kind of a physiological reaction. Another thing I did was also identify what are those triggers, both physical and mental, that could be causing this hair fall. Because yes, you need to identify what's what are those habits that are not working for you in your day-to-day -day life, but also what are those things that are probably stressing you out that's causing your hair to actually fall out. Now, how does stress really affect your hair? Can that really happen? Yes, it can. It's a condition called telogen effluvium. Now, what is telogen effluvium? Telogen effluvium is the name for a common cause of temporary hair loss due to the excessive shedding of resting or telogen hair after some shock to the system. So, what is this shock? It could be physical or mental. Now, physical could be something like COVID, the seasonal flu, getting the jab, and mental could be a mental trigger. It could be anxiety, panic, the loss of a loved one, the stress of everything that's around you. Essentially stress that is unexpected, consistent, or in short bursts, and that's the worst one because you always feel like you're on the edge. So what were those triggers for me? I personally feel it was the second jab combined with the stress of everything that was on my plate. Now the telogen effluvium was probably also caused by physical stress, like overtraining. Yes, that can happen. When you're overtraining, you are putting yourself into a state of deprivation. The body gets into a fight or flight mode and it cuts off the supply to everything that is non-essential for survival. And hair does not make it on that list. And I think what also made it worse was just general poor hair practices, tying your hair too tight, using the wrong kind of rubber band or not brushing your hair enough. I mean, I was so scared of brushing my hair, but I didn't realize it was counterproductive because my scalp wasn't getting enough blood circulation. Here's what I think worked in terms of products and practices. So I followed a two-pronged approach. One, address hair fall by strengthening the roots and two, encourage hair growth by feeding the follicles. So the easy bits first. I stopped tying tight ponytails with thin rubber bands. Tying your hair too tight can cause traction alopecia and that's what causes the receding hairline because of the pull. I swapped it instead by using silk or cloth rubber bands and tying it into a loose bun. 
I took a little more time to towel dry my hair and I absolutely don't comb my hair when it's wet because the follicles are very delicate and are more prone to fall out. I also trimmed my hair on the day of the full moon. Guys, this sounds like absolute quackery, but I've been doing it forever. My mom told me about this and it is something in the farmer's almanac. The moon has a certain effect on the tide. You can see that on the earth and it does also have an effect on us and our system. And this is what I believe. If you cut your hair in the waxing stage, your hair goes faster. If you cut your hair during the waning stage, it actually grows slower. And if you cut it on the full moon, it strengthens the root and makes your hair grow thicker. So yeah, believe it or not, but I did it. Lastly, I fitted a water softener on top of my shower head. Now hard water is just generally bad for you. It's bad for your skin, it's bad for your hair, it's bad for the taps, struggling to get those stains out. But coming back to hair, it can make your hair fall a lot. So I bought a simple, inexpensive, uh, hard water softener. I got mine from Amazon and I have noticed a difference, especially on my skin as well. Now, the products. Number one, Magic Hair Oil by The Hair Kitchen. Ritu, the founder of The Hair Kitchen, called me one night uh, when I was busy googling um, how to get out of this whole hair loss mess and she showed me a picture that I must have uploaded and she's like Meera something's not right I can see your hair is really thinning and I was like what are the chances now Ritu has helped me through two I mean only two <laughs> both my uh, postpartum hair loss journeys she personalizes the oil for you and your condition at that point of time and I feel this magic hair oil, it is a tiny little bottle that I put every second night just on the temples and right here where I felt my hair was really thinning and I noticed a difference in the first month. Number two is the Rebirth Hair Oil that's also by The Hair Kitchen which I put on the rest of my hair only in the roots and not in the shaft. Number three, I followed that by the Hair Regain Balm, again by the Hair Kitchen. It's a pre-shampoo mask and that's what you actually put on the shafts of your hair, make them slightly wet and run your fingers through with this Hair Regain Balm and keep it for about half an hour, one hour till you're supposed to wash your hair. When you wash your hair with a regular shampoo, I mean, I use a regular shampoo because I find it a waste to use fancy shampoos especially when you have oil in your hair and you need to get it out. Then the hair kitchen conditioner. This one is actually magic. She customizes this conditioner for you. My hair feels so smooth and so silky after I've washed it. After towel drying, I put the hair kitchen hair glaze. Um, it's a creamy serum that you just run through with your hands on the shafts of your hair. It just seals them in locks in that moisture, allows the comb to glide through without tugging at the roots and it smells lovely. My daughter uses it as well. I haven't yet found a leave-in serum that is as good as this one. Now here's a product that I found extremely interesting. It's the Avimi Naturals Hair Tone Hairspray. I found it randomly while scrolling on Instagram. It's uh, the brainchild of an 85 year old gentleman fondly known as Nanaji. He's put all his learnings together to formulate two products, a hairspray and a hair oil. It's got arnica, methi and many others but the reason why I fit it into my hair routine is because it's got a DHT blocker. DHT is an androgen, a hormone that can shrink your hair follicles as well as shorten this cycle, causing hair to grow out, looking thinner and more brittle as well as fall out faster. DHT can also make it take longer for your follicles to grow new hair once the old hair has fallen out. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Sounds like what we've been served. So yes, it does help to block the action of DHT and yes, I have seen it work. It is a miracle. It smells like a char, but you know what? It is totally worth it. I noticed my hair fall reduce within a week. I used it twice a day and I continue to do so. So I used all of these together, start to finish and it worked.
over to encouraging hair growth. Now we managed to stop it from falling, etc., etc., etc. Hair is smelling like a jar, oiling it thrice a week. Now, how do we get it to grow? Let's start with the simple bits. Number one, brushing your hair or dry massaging. Blood circulation is extremely important. I mean, how can the roots grow if you don't air the soil? Simple. Number two, a great nutritional supplement. How can you expect your hair to grow if you don't feed it well? Remember when I mentioned that my hair hurt? Yeah, that's because of a vitamin B12 and B3 deficiency. It's common in vegetarians like me. I find it very difficult to keep up with tablets. I always start with a lot of enthusiasm. I bought like a zillion of those boxes which say morning, afternoon, evening, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, set up the whole thing, but I just can't do it. So I switched to well-being nutrition melts. Now I found this randomly while I was, the best ideas actually and the best things actually come to you randomly. Um, I found this randomly when I was at the airport and I found them too good to be true. I mean, they're like these Listerine strips that you put on your tongue, they melt in your mouth, no soft gel capsule, no hard tablet. It's just a strip melts on your mouth and you're done. And it tastes like mango bite. I started with healthy hair in the morning after breakfast, multivitamins after lunch, nano iron after dinner. It became so simple that I'm actually regular. Good practices have to be simple if you want to make them a habit. And yeah, these three aren't just for your hair, they're for your overall nutrition and well-being. Number three is Lily Choi's follicle power tincture. It's a TCM tincture to nourish the kidney system. Now, traditional Chinese medicine works on organ systems. And if the kidney system is imbalanced, the first thing you'll notice is hair fall. I have half a dropper in water every night. So I'm going to talk about oils. I'm going to start with the Avimi Natural Oil. So this is the Avimi Natural's Kesh Pallavan Hair Oil. Uh, as you can see, it's almost over. I've actually ordered my next bottle. Uh, I love that it comes with this applicator. It can get the laziest and the messiest person to put oil in their hair. Uh, I just run it through my hair very quickly and it does a great job of distributing it evenly. Um, and I usually do uh, do it before breakfast so that by the time I'm done, my hair has had enough time to soak in the oil and then I can go and rush in for a bath. And I sometimes would still put um, the magic hair oil on my temples and the Avimi oil on the rest of my hair. Another great oil that I was using before I got Avimi was this Summer Dasabuti Hair Oil by Nat Habit. I love that it's season specific because no one recipe fits all season. There are dominant qualities in each season and that's what can trigger your hair fall. It comes with all the herbs inside it so it's perpetually infusing and I love that. And yes, I didn't touch any heat to my hair in the first month of this entire process. Just tie my hair up with a clip and let it air dry and use the baby brush to smoothen out uh, the baby hair. Yeah, baby hair. So that's it. I know it was a lot, but I have been doing this for the last three months and I have felt a difference. I felt those areas filling up. I've seen lesser hair on my brush, in my hands, lesser hair in the drain. And I'm really happy with how shiny and smooth my hair has gotten. I never thought it would be shiny. I just wanted it to stop falling. Apart from just basic hair care, things like supplementation, a great leave-in conditioner, taking a break from heat really helps to make your hair look shinier and not just stop with the hair fall. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys some real honest perspective after having tried it myself and I am feeling so much better. Fingers crossed it stays this way. And I haven't mentioned things like drinking enough water and eating well because I wanted to be more specific and less generic. Do those things anyway. I mean, drink water, eat well, work out, sleep on time. Because at the end of the day, your body works in harmony. And things like hair fall or, you know, skin flare ups and things like that, they're just signaling that there is an internal imbalance. So if you're seeing drastic changes, look within like I did right and I told you guys in the beginning, introspect and that can be on a mental level and that can also be introspection on your practices, your lifestyle and overall how well or not you're taking care of your body.
I hope this helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Please leave them in the comments below. Um, and if you have any suggestions, please leave those too. I'd love to try them out. Any hacks, any things that you've tried out and it works really well. And the links to everything that I've mentioned in this video are in the caption below. It's a new year and I hope this brings you everything that you wished for, healthy hair included. Bye guys. So like, share and subscribe.